بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپریٹ گورننس وی ہیو بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ویریس گلوبل فیکٹرز دی یونیورسلائزیشن آف کارپریٹ گورننس اینڈ آلسو اٹس ویریس پریمیمس دی ڈیسٹینیشن دا پاتھ وے دی دی انویسٹر دی انویسٹر بہیویئر اینڈ دی انویسٹر مائنڈ سیٹ اینڈ دی انویسٹر ڈیسیژن میکنگ اینڈ وی آلسو سو دیٹ ہاؤ دی انویسٹر از لوکنگ ایٹ پریمیمس بٹ وداؤٹ کامپرومائزنگ آن گورننس وداؤٹ کامپرومائزنگ Uh, on merit based decision making and without compromising on the process of achieving uh, the uh, targeted profits so today we are going to move forward and talk about globalization in corporate governance and how it is uh, affecting corporate governance on a national and on an international level now the experience of globalization represents a profound reconfiguration of the world's economy compared to earlier periods of internationalization an international economy links distinct national markets a global economy fuses national markets into a coherent whole so again there is a difference between internationalization and globalization internationalization has been taking place since the 19th century when cross border trading uh, started when uh, due to uh, the uh, emergence of the industrial revolution we see uh, that uh, th- pr- things produced in one country or in one region would be going to the other and there were huge profits uh, which were generated through that internationalization however when we are talking about globalization then what we see is that in an international economy uh, different markets are linked together but in a global economy it tends to fuse national markets into a coherent whole and that means it makes it one so it could be that in one country uh, let's say if we pick up in uh, a vehicle or an automobile then in one country uh, the tires would be produced in the other one uh, the axles would be produced in the third one the engines would be produced and another one the interior and the other accessories would be produced and it would be uh, it would be totally put together in another country and then sold across the whole world so that would be a coherent whole because uh, there is a great need to integrate everything and now we are even talking about zero inventories so why what are those zero inventories that supply chain management is done uh, in uh, such a precise way that everything clicks together and you have to have zero inventory or zero stocks and that again is done through the fusion of national markets into a coherent whole and that requires a lot of technology uh, a lot of uh, perfection and also international standards working together within the different organizations and different countries so that there is a better understanding and coherence and synergy which is created between these different national markets for a global impact uh, the growth of foreign direct investment exceeded the growth uh, in national and global Uh, trade and that is what we see that fdi is a major indicator of how an economy is growing and the more fdi coming in the better results which are basically emerge and the stronger the economy basically becomes the evolving pattern of these industrial and investment processes of glo- globalization became increasingly apparent so again this whole process of industrialization and the investment was directly proportional to each other and we see uh, that it has become very apparent and also has also become something which is the need of the r and without that it would not be possible to do business in the right way uh, globalization of industry also refers to an evolving pattern of cross border activities of firms now what do they involve number 1 international investment or foreign direct investment trade taking place freely uh, between different countries and different regions collaboration for purposes of product development so again uh, there might be an american company but the product is being developed in pakistan so we we see virtual offices and also again uh, the out sourcing of different activities uh, production and sourcing and that sourcing basically is how is it that you uh, use similar platforms to each other there are large companies now which use similar platforms basically basically to ensure that there is uh, a cut down uh, of cost and they can become more efficient and more effective and that ensures uh, that their products are better and more cheaper priced and then how do we do the marketing and marketing again Uh, is not only now uh, limited to what we call billboards or to electronic media but more so the social media and the virtual media and then the reviews and comments which are coming in how that is being generated and how that is being catalyzed for the uh, betterment of the uh, company and how is it that we uh, use market influencers and social media influencers and all of that put together uh, comes up with a marketing package so all of these new paradigms and all of these new uh, dimensions and dynamics are changing the globalization Uh, of corporate governance and 
again the organization for economic cooperation and development basically states that international investment trade collaboration production and sourcing and marketing are the key to success for a globalization of corporate governance so that is extremely important to keep in mind globalization has reduced the sense of isolation felt in much of the developing world it has given many people in the developing countries access to knowledge well beyond the reach of even the wealthiest in any country so again there is this free flow of knowledge uh, we basically live in a palmized world uh, the smartphone has access to the whole universe so that information is freely available you just google or you just search and you find out what is happening what is the competition what are the comparisons what are the best costs where is the best sourcing all of that is available so therefore isolation has now come to an end there is no isolated place anywhere you could be a poor country you could be uh, a developing country you could be a developed country but now there is a level playing field and those uh, nations who would have better systems and better frameworks and better platforms they have more potential of moving ahead and again the difference between the wealthiest and the poorest has also diminished uh, because of free access to information we live in a knowledge based economy we live in knowledge based institutions we basically promote knowledge uh, systems and processes which are run by knowledge individuals having knowledge based laws called intellectual property generating intellectual capital and also churning the economy forward and creating a competitiveness and value addition which is not found anywhere else so all of this is basically a consequence of globalization those who vilify globalization uh, often overlook its benefits globalization is progress for some but unfortunately uh, there is also uh, a backlash whereby some communities uh, are fighting poverty and that is because uh, the uh, rich are becoming richer also and we basically see elon musk crossing 250 billion uh, we see that Uh, in covid uh, there have been more billionaires generated but on the other hand poverty has also increased so uh, this misdemeanor or uh, this uh, distortion of uh, of economics or uh, of wealth and poverty is something which also is emerging through globalization and it is very important that through better corporate governance this is also addressed uh, more effectively uh, and in the best possible way the ilo basically says the current process of globalization is generating unbalanced outcomes wealth is being created but too many countries and people are not sharing its benefits some countries have little or no voice in shaping the process so what we see is that we have powerhouses like the united states we have powerhouses like the european union we have powerhouses like uh, brics uh, brazil russia india china and south uh, africa we have powerhouses like the asean region so these powerhouses basically are tending to overwhelm uh, uh, nations and Uh, developing countries and that can have its own adverse effects so therefore there is a need to balance things out and to ensure that the greater benefit of people the greater benefit of uh, economies is catered to rather than creating a cutthroat competition in which uh, whole countries can be blocked out and could suffer and that would create uh, a dissonance within the global system which would have long term negative Uh, repercussions and that is a, again something that we have to look at and ensure through standardization through internationalization to globalization and also better balanced approach policies strategies and laws which would divide the wealth that is generated amongst the different strata of society thank you so much